okay? Just, you know, I think their whole fashion and their whole fucking way of life is just irritating, just can't wait for it to pass. Then there are those of us who think the L train should go all the way to the Polish countryside. <laughs> Like, it's serious, it is a really good thing that hipster is not an ethnicity, because <laughs> at this point, it's scary, and like, it's happened more than once, like, every time I see, like, a store in my neighborhood put out, like, a table with fedoras and goofy fake glasses, I flip the thing over, like, Jesus, with the fucking money changers. It's like, not in my neighborhood, not again. <laughs> Because that's the thing, I used to hang out in Williamsburg. Actually, live there again now. <laughs> That'll be funny later. For the rest of you. Like, I, I just, like, that's, I used to hang out there like five, six years ago, and it was, it was just, it was awesome. I loved it there. It was like the first generation gentrifiers, like people who couldn't afford to live anywhere else, you know? It was like real artists and musicians and writers and cokeheads. Just all my favorite people, like in one place. <laughs> And you know, people just, they, they get second-hand clothes because that's all they could afford. Then these second-generation gentrifiers came in. I'm not afraid to call them insurgents. <laughs> and they came in and they just co-opted the poverty as a style. And just, like, I get off the train at Bedford Avenue now, I walk around, and it, it's like coming home and finding some asshole you don't know hanging out in your backyard wearing your dead friend's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Sad. And I'll leave you with a little story. This actually happened uh, the last time I was unemployed and I didn't get the unemployment. I was, uh, I just had, didn't have a home for a bit. And uh, it was probably about three, four months. I was just, you know, couch surfing, sleeping on the train and shit. And you know, it, it took its toll on my, uh, on my wardrobe. Anyway, I'm at this uh, party in Williamsburg and this trust fund hipster prick has the nerve to tell me that the holes in my pants are a bit much. <laughs> a little over the top for his taste. <laughs> so uh, I, did, I, I told him, I was like, I, I really can't argue with you. Uh, I guess what happens is when you lose your job for taking three days off to bury your grandmother, um, then they go to court, lie about it, fuck you out of your unemployment, uh, you lose all your money, your apartment, girlfriend leaves you, start mooching off friends, sleeping on couches, floors, the F trains, literally getting by on whiskey, peanuts, and self-loathing. <laughs> Usually the first thing to go is your fashion sense. <laughs> you sheltered, overfed, useless, do-nothing piece of shit. You contribute nothing to this society. If, like, if you had to go a week in the real world without your trust fund, they'd send what's left you home to your parents in your Thundercats lunchbox. <laughs> like, don't try to tell me how to live. I didn't buy these holes in a store, okay? I earned them. But I didn't say any of that. Because um, I keep it classy. Uh, what I did... I tried using logic. Uh, I said, well, let's look at it logically. Uh, you're a hipster. I didn't say that either. <laughs> That's dangerous. That's like waking a sleepwalker. <laughs> I said, uh, you appreciate irony. How do you feel about the irony of explaining to a 12-year-old Cambodian kid in a sweatshop that he's got to tear holes in the perfectly good pair of pants he just made so you can look interesting. <laughs> okay, boss. I just finished making very nice pants. Can't wait to sell them. Get a fair share of the profit. <laughs> yes, sir. Globalization. Gonna raise all boats. <laughs> Especially the rowboat I live under. <laughs> where I sleep on a very sharp rock. <laughs> Yes, sir, trickle down economics, all the wealth, gonna trickle down from the top, like the monsoon rain, trickle down through the hole in my rowboat. <laughs> you want me to tear a hole in pants? American kid pay more for pants with a hole? <laughs> my pants full of hole, 
So in my pants, I keep very nice pants. Oh, I have to be very nice pants with a hole. No, no, I, I see the irony. You can't beat me over the head with it. Wow, American kid must work real hard to be able to afford very nice pants with a hole. I work 90 hour a week, live on a robo with a hole in the monsoon rain link through every night spider monkeys come and steal my shoes. <laughs> American kid don't work? American kid lay around loft on Bedford Avenue in Williamsburg all day? That's a very nice area. Even I know that. I live in Cambodia. <laughs> Oh, his daddy give him a trust fund. His daddy must be a very important man. Must do a lot of good for a lot of people. Be able to afford to have a shitless layabout kid. Hang around a loft on Bedford Avenue in Williamsburg all day. Smoke clove cigarettes, do a bunch of cocaine, have a wine and cheese parties. <laughs> Listen to shitty music, talk about social injustice like you're actually making a difference in the world. But he's just doing it to fuck impressionable college girls. <laughs> So he can sell out, turn around, go get a job with daddy, be a, be a vice president somewhere, get a duplex on Upper East Side. But I'm stuck here in shitty ass Cambodia, living under a robo with a hole in the monsoon rain, leaking through, sleep on a very sharp rock, every night spider monkeys come and steal my shoes, eating fish hatch for breakfast, lunch, dinner with shitty ass pants full of holes. <laughs> What's his daddy do? Oh, he own a factory? Make very nice pants with a hole? <laughs> Well, that's fucked up. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Yeah.